once again request the audience to put their mobile phones in silent mode and maintain the decorum of the event. Persistent questioning and healthy inquisitiveness are the first requisite for acquiring learning of any kind. These words of Mahatma Gandhi are consistent to our university's motto, Pariprashna and Samriddhi, growth to the spirit of inquiry. Namaste and a very good evening to one and all. I, Rukaya Kapasi, welcome you all to the inauguration of Entrepreneur's Podium, an event that the Institute is hosting with the objective to reinforce the spirit of entrepreneurship in the students by the presence of dignitaries and the industry experts with varied domain expertise. It's a wonderful opportunity for the budding entrepreneurs to learn about the journeys, success stories marked with milestones of achievement acquired after overcoming various challenges, capitalizing on infinite opportunities with numerous initiatives, strategies for countering competitions, and personal growth and efforts made for fulfilling corporate social responsibility. It's an honor to have Shri Punit Lalbhai, Executive Director of Arvind Limited, Ahmedabad, as our Chief Guest and who will deliver the inaugural address. We are also honored by the presence of Dr. Shailendra Mehta, Provost, Ahmedabad University, to chair the event and deliver the keynote speech. We welcome you, sir. I would now request Professor Keshav Bhatia to introduce the event. Very good evening to all of you, uh, respected guests, Tevidi ma'am, head of institutes, faculty members, and students. As an institute, BKMIBA has always stood for generating and nurturing ideas. Ideas that are not only about doing things, different things, but about doing things differently. Having been a student myself, I can vouch for the fact that this institute has constantly and consciously fostered the spirit of entrepreneurship in students. In 2011, we at VKMIBA started to offer entrepreneurship as a course at the undergrad level. In 2012, out of the, uh, out of the four electives that we were offering, entrepreneurship became one. And uh, uh, in the course, uh, in this specialization of entrepreneurship, it is for the first time that we were offering courses like developing business ideas, establishing and growing ventures, and also a course on business plans. Today, I can very proudly say that entrepreneurship is not only taught at the TY level, but also something that we have taken for the second year students. And going beyond that, it is also something that we have launched as a new program, being the IMBA program, a five-year integrated course for, a, uh, for the first years. These, eff these efforts which have paid rich dividends, that today, today students who are pursuing their master's courses at reputed institutes, not only in India and abroad, and those who have chosen to join their own family business have shared with us the edge that they hold over both their competitors and peers that we today take great confidence and pride in the courses of entrepreneurship that we teach. To contextualize the event for which we are gathered here today, I would say that in one of the entrepreneurship sessions, the idea of meeting entrepreneurs in person and exploring learnings through their real life journeys, experiences came up to which we have kind of narrowed down and decided to hold this event for all of you. This idea of the e, the e podium or the entrepreneurs podium is something that we would start off with our two speakers for the day and uh, stretching over three days this is our attempt to bring these entrepreneurs in front of all of you where you can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with all of them and where the academicians can take a back seat. I request Professor Somil Shah to please invite to introduce our speakers for the day and invite. Thank you. Thank you, Keshav. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce the speakers for the day, starting with our keynote speaker for the day, Dr. Shailendra Mehta, 
Dr. Mehta, as you all know, is currently the Provost Vice Chancellor of Ahmedabad University. Prior to this, he was the visiting professor of business policy at Indian Institute of Management, where he also headed the collaboration between Duke and IMA as the regional managing director for India, West Asia, Middle East, and subsequently he was the academic director of Duke. Prior to that, he was at Purdue University for 16 years, where he taught economics and strategic management. Dr. Mehta has done extensive research in the areas of entrepreneurship, industrial organization, information economics, and experimental economics. His research was subject of a full-length review by The Economist, which is the very pub respected publication. Uh, his work on creating world-class universities has been discussed around the world and profiled in over 10 languages. Dr. Mehta has done groundbreaking work in the area of synthetic economies by creating a very comprehensive framework for agent-based research using a combination of human and artificial agents. The technology is currently being used to model homeland security issues worldwide. He has authored and co-authored proposals that brought over $9 million of research funding to Purdue University from the National Science Foundation, the 21st Century Fund, Microsoft, etc. He has been on various doctoral dissertation committees. He is also an award-winning teacher. He has been awarded one of Purdue University's highest awards, the Class of 1922 Award for Teaching, Innovation, help, and Helping Students to Learn. This is an entrepreneur's podium and the background for that entrepreneurship. For six years, he led Purdue's entrepreneurship initiative, as part of which he organized the flagship entrepreneurial competition and in the process worked with over 200 teams of students on their business plans, several of whom went on to get venture funding. The program that he set up was rated among one of the topmost programs in the world. Over the year, Dr. Mehta has consulted with and taught senior executives worldwide, working with companies like Eli Lilly, Genpact, Honeywell, IBM, Infosys, uh, Tata, SBI, PricewaterhouseCoopers, among others. He is a member of several high-powered committees convened by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, including the Higher Education Committee of Central Advisory Board of Education. At INA, he teaches one of the very few courses available anywhere on creating high-performance organizations, a topic that is of research, teaching, and professional interest to him. His BA and MA are from St. Stephen's and College Nidali and Delhi School of Economics, respectively. His MPhil is from Balliol College, Oxford, and his PhD is from Harvard. May I request our student volunteer to welcome Dr. Mehta with a bouquet of flowers and also present a memento as a token of our appreciation. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Moving on, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the chief guest for the day, Mr. Punit Lalbai. His ancestors used to lend money to Mughal emperors Akbar and Jahangir. His great grandfather, Kasturbai Lalbai, financed the Congress during the freedom struggle and was instrumental in establishing many educational institutions like IMA, IIT Pawai, and of course, Ahmedabad Education Society, to name a few among the many. Father Sanjay Lalbai is Managing Director of Arvind, one of the largest denim manufacturers in the world. But Punit Lalbai wears slightly the burden of a rich legacy on his shoulders, a very straightforward, down-to-earth person. His helpful nature has spurned Arvind to encourage farmers to grow organic cotton in Maharashtra and Gujarat. Over 70,000 acres have been bought under organic cotton cultivation as a result. The initiative has seen farmers' profit go up by 30 to 40 percent. Punit also looks after four divisions of the Irvin Malbay Group, technical textiles, water treatment, agribusiness, and engineering. He understands that businesses mature and there is a constant need to evolve and develop new businesses, so he's heading the new business initiatives vertical of Irvin Group and he's developing future businesses like Irvin OG Private Limited, a joint venture, venture company into manufacture of non-woven textiles, Irvin PD Glass Composites Limited, another joint venture which is going to be predominantly manufacturing glass fabrics. Recently the group has also diversified into footwear. 
Having finished his graduation from University of California and post-graduation from Yale, he joined the family business and then after taking some experience, went on to pursue his MBA from INSEAD, France. He has several awards and honors during his career, including research grants, presidential fellowship grant, JM Long Endowed Scholarship, and inclusion in Dean's List for consistent academic excellence. He is passionate about nature conservation and sustainability and has served as a member of board for Sustainable Apparel Coalition, council member for Better Cotton Initiative Geneva, and a member of CII for Family Business Network. Pulitz, his understanding of the need to do sustainable business and conserve natural resources has spurred a water recycling initiative which saves lakhs of liters of water, groundwater by cycling the water, or recycling the water at the Saint Age plant. Pulitz's dream is to build in a way that makes a difference to both the business and the society. Such altruism isn't surprising given his family's illustrious history. When he gets time, he watches movie The Godfather starring Marlon Brando being a favorite. He initially wanted to become a teacher, but a change of heart was not too long in coming on having realized he did be able to serve the society better if he joined his father's business. May I request our student volunteer to welcome Puneet Bhai with a bouquet of flowers and also present a memento as a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much. So, may I invite you to take the stage? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me start out by asking all of you here, how many of you want to be entrepreneurs? My goodness, I love it. Yeah, you the Gujarati effect here will cool. Obviously. Now, the rest of you who didn't raise your hands, I was a little disappointed because remember entrepreneurship, by the way, some of if I, the ones who didn't raise your hands, could, would anybody care to say why you don't want to be an entrepreneur? The others are thinking about it, it seems. So nobody has finally made up their mind not to be an entrepreneur. That's good. So the reason why I mentioned that is you can be an entrepreneur in many different walks of life. In fact, there is hardly a walk of life in which you cannot be an entrepreneur. So let me start out by asking you, what is the definition of entrepreneurship? Who is an entrepreneur? You should be able to tell me, if you want to be entrepreneurs, you should know what an entrepreneur is, right? Anybody? What is entrepreneurship? Or who is an entrepreneur? A show of hands, anybody? Name some famous entrepreneurs. How about that? Who are some of the entrepreneurs that you can think of, that you sort of look up to? Yes. Elon Musk. Who else? By the way, everybody is familiar with Elon Musk, right? The, yes, okay. What else? Thirubhai Ambani. What else? Huh? Jamshedji Tata. Jamshedji Tata. Who else? Tulsi Tanti. Who else? Mahmud Yunus. By the way, interesting, huh? Not a business person. That's good. Entrepreneur. What else? Who else is an entrepreneur? Narendra Modi. Why do you say that? Sorry? Okay, so why do you say that Narendra Modi is an entrepreneur? For example? Okay. Very interesting. What else? What else? What else would you say makes them an entrepreneur? So, just the fact that somebody deals with uncertainty makes that person an entrepreneur? Okay. What else? What else? Any other thoughts? What else? Will, yes. Zero to one. Okay. Ability to take risk. What else? Anybody in the back? What makes an entrepreneur? So what is common between uh, uh, GRD Tata, Mohammed Yunus, 
Dhirubhai Ambani Narendra Modi. Yes, yes, madam. Understanding the needs of people coming up with an invention or innovation, very, very good. What else? So, by the way, what need did Muhammad Yunus understand? Yes. Uh, the microfinancing, in simple terms, if it are made. Right, fair enough. What else? Some other hands were raised. Somebody else had raised a hand. What, what makes an entrepreneur? Yes. The need to do anything? Why not me? Very interesting. So let's, let's analyze it a little bit. So let me start with a story. Since you mentioned Muhammad Yunus, oh, about three, four years ago, when I was at IIM Ahmedabad, we, did a con we had a conference on strategy. Strategy is my area. And we had Muhammad Yunus. He was supposed to come, but he was held up. So he actually uh, came in through video conferencing. So, you know, we had him uh, uh, video conference in. And he said something very interesting. Because you're all familiar with his work on microfinance, but what is interesting is what he's doing now. You see, that is the interesting thing about an entrepreneur. So he said, he said his latest project involves the beggars in Dhaka. Abab, ye sochi, what can, what, what as an entrepreneur can you do with the beggars in Dhaka? Think, think a little bit before I tell you what he did. What do you think if you were an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, and you said, well, we have all these beggars in Dhaka, how do we solve this problem? It's a big problem. It's an uncertain problem. You don't know how, what is the solution. How would you deal with it? What would be, how would you analyze this problem? I'm just trying to th get you to think a little bit like an entrepreneur. Any, uh, any thoughts? How would you deal with, yes? Yes, what kind of stuff would you like to do? Such as? Cleaning the streets? Do you think somebody um, who has, who uh, they would be amenable to that? Cleaning the streets, what else? By the way, the cleaning of streets would require a lot of organization and uh, would require a lot of funding. His solution was actually simpler. And you can tell me whether it was more elegant or not. But he said, what do they do? Essentially, they are salespeople. They are selling. They are selling a little bit of their story, or they are selling a little bit of who they are, and they are basically getting donations in return. So that is one part. So they, for one thing, they they know sales, whatever. Jo bhi, jaise bhi soche uske baare mein, they know sales a little bit. The second thing is that they have no hesitation. Now, I'll tell you how hard it is. One, one, some years ago, as part of a fun exercise, several of us decided to go out in the streets of Chicago and try and get, to try, try and pass out flyers to people to get them to attend an event. Okay, this was part of an exercise. Many, many years ago, many, many years ago. And I can tell you, it was excruciatingly painful to go up to a stranger and say, yeah, you know, take a look at this pamphlet and come and attend the show was an extremely painful exercise. You know, every time, most people would sort of say, oh, come on, don't bother me. You know, there'd be a frown on their face. And every third or fourth person with a smile would take it. Maybe 20, one out of 20 people would actually talk to you. Why is it that you're doing this event? May I'll think about it. And maybe out of the 500 flyers that we passed out, maybe five or six people would have come up. But essentially, a beggar is a salesperson who's selling something, and he's used to rejection. And he's used to being persistent. If you think about it, it's a very, 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 very rare skill set. I bet that if we try to do it, it would take us some time to develop that skill set. So that was his first observation. And see, this is 
that's the fundamental part of being an entrepreneur. To see what everybody else has seen and to observe what nobody else has observed. Do you understand? So he didn't see beggars as a menace to society. He saw them as people who have over the years developed a skill in